Holy, holy crap. Ah, oh, so you almost caught that one on camera. You almost caught my toes. Hey, YouTube. We're back. Um, it's been it's busy last few months, as some of y'all might know, um, especially if you follow me on Instagram. So we welcomed our own first little baby reptile into the world at the end of December. And when I say baby reptile, I mean little human person thing. So things have been busy taking care of a baby. What are you doing, Sam? Hey, doofus. But anyway, so things have been very, very busy. Everything is moving right along here at our, uh, at the little zoo. So I figured kind of just go and just kind of show some of the animals. What I really wanted to talk about today is cyclora body behavior. I saw on, uh, on one of the Facebook groups, someone actually asked about uh, a little bit more in depth as to really what the different body behaviors of cyclora are, what they look like, what they mean. So I figured I would show that. But first, we're gonna actually, today's Missouri day. So we are gonna get some Missouri mixed up real quick. It's just uh, the tortoise diet for those who don't know. Um, usually once a week, I'll feed this to everybody. What are you doing, Sam? This dog is weird, man. Um, so yeah, let me get this stuff mixed up and then let's go, uh, we'll head and take a look at some of the guys and gals down there and go over some body language stuff. And actually before we head down there, so again, if some of y'all that follow us on uh, on the social media, we are looking to downsize just a hair, um, mainly the stuff that we really don't have breeding plans for. Um, one of the ones we're looking to uh, ship is this girl right here um female cute little thing she's spunky which i personally like um good body behavior right there that head shaking side to side like that is her saying this is my house get the heck out of here pretty much um yeah this girl is a couple years old now um she has not laid in fertiles yet so if not this year i would probably guess next year because she doesn't look like she is gravid at all. But yeah, so we are looking to rehome her. She would be a great addition to a breeding project um, or even just as a pet. You know, she's spunky. She needs to be worked with to be tamed down um, just because I haven't. But she's honestly, she's a very curious animal. Um, so she'll be tamed very easily. So if y'all are interested, drop me a line on, uh, on Facebook or Instagram at GBL Iguanas and we can talk. Right, let's come in here and start with Diego. So even though it is... At what, like two o'clock in the afternoon right now, this little bum is just waking up. Please excuse all the nonsense around. He is coming. He can smell this stuff, but then me being down in here, flip flops, isn't really the smartest thing in the world. Yeah, <laughs> for whatever reason, he thinks that my toesies are food when they're not. Um, so to prepare this Missouri, whoops, dropped a little bit of it. Um, just put it with a, some like lukewarm water that really helps you mush it up. This is really good for them to get hydration into them as well as nutrients. But let's talk about body language. So he's not really showing me any body language right now. Um, he's incredibly dark just because he's cold because he hasn't fast yet. He just woke up. There's no lights in there because bull blew a while back and the base got stuck in the socket and I just never did anything with it just because I never needed it really. But yeah, Diego here is doing good. Just got some skins on him. But yeah, so he's kind of indifferent to me being in here right now. Um, to give a, a general consensus really on what the body language is like with Cyclora. So on a happy, a happy Cyclora, if they're happy to see you, when you come in here and you start petting them like this, what they're gonna typically do is they're gonna rise up almost like they're on hydraulics. All four of the legs are gonna rise up off the ground. Head is typically gonna be pointed up in the air. Eyes will be closed. And then another important thing to look at is the tail. So of course, you see the tail is up and then towards the, oh, sorry buddy. He doesn't always like his tail to be messed with. Um, but the end part of that tail needs to be on the ground. If he stands up on all fours and he has his tail up in the air, that's actually a defensive position. That's saying, hey, you better move or I'm gonna whip the heck out of you. Um, being tail whipped does not feel good, especially by a big iguana. Cause you can just see on here, you can just see all the spikes, the rough scales and their tails are strong. So if you get tail whipped, it hurts. Got a little bit of a, a little bit of shed there too. 
but yeah so if you have it and the tail's up in the air like that pretty much you need to back off um because they're being territorial and you're going to get whipped but diego is doing well um if y'all haven't noticed got some some new ink here i'm sorry it's kind of bad lighting kind of hard to get it get it right but yeah i got a picture of uh got diego um artist dude named simone he's from italy actually um phenomenal phenomenal artist he actually uh him and a bunch of group of artists out of the UK uh, called Holy Trinity Tattoos. They come and they tour um, a lot of the tattoo conventions around the country. And I just happened to see their ad on Facebook and just showing the pieces that they were doing on tour. And I was like, just freaking blown away by it. Um, and I've been looking to obviously add some more stuff. We love Diego, so got in touch with them. Ended up talking with uh, Simone, who's now a buddy of mine. And he's just a phenomenal, phenomenal artist. So he was here in Atlanta back in March. So we got that done. Um, definitely going back to see him some more. So I'll actually drop his IG um, down in the description below. So y'all can check out his work um, and shoot him a message. You know, they, they travel around the country. So absolutely reach out to them. And if they're gonna be in a city near you, if Simone's gonna be, you know, on tour in your city, you need to go see him. Ain't that right, Diego? Sure. All right, so now you want to talk about a lizard who loves his Missouri. Right, we get in here and close this door. Frankie boy here, this is crack to him. So I need to back up because I don't want him uh, potentially jumping since we are still working on our relationship. I'm just gonna put this on the other side here. See, he smells it. Right when I walked in, he knows something's going on. Come on, she's gonna run over here. Bam. Once he realizes where it is, there we go. Sorry, I'm trying to film here and get him his food in uh, in one swipe. So I'm trying to kind of do the two things at once here. There we go. So Frankie's normally pretty good about showing me body language. Um, he is still a little bit defensive with me. He's still just, he's an old man. Well, not really, he's like nine, 10 years old. But kind of stuck in his ways a little bit. But we have our days where he's good and then we have his, our days where, you know, he gets a little funky, so. Typically, if he's eating, especially the Missouri, oh, see, he just, he kind of heard a little bit of a tail whip there, but I think I kind of caught him off guard. Come on, buddy. But see, so this is the good position. This is actually perfect right here, right there. You see how he was, how he was just standing up on all fours, nice and high, head up in the air. And then you saw the tail, you saw the base was up, the back of the tail went down. That's what you want to see from a good, happy iguana. Yeah, you can see he's kind of doing it again here. And pay attention to that tail. It's going down. If the end of that tail was up in the air, that's no bueno. But so Frankie here doesn't head bob with me or show anything like that. He is more so about the tail, but he has his moments where he's like this and he's just a perfect little boy. I guess because I fed him his favorite treat. But Frankie's such a good boy. Let's look at this pattern. So Frankie here is a Cuban rock iguana which is the Cyclora nubula. So like I've mentioned in the past, you have three um, species of Cyclora that you're finding commonly in the pet trade here. Um, you have the, the Lewis eye, which is like Diego, the Grand Cayman Blue Rock Iguana hybrids. You have the Rhinoceros Iguana, like Soli and Tammy, Ron Bindi, which are the Cyclora cornuta. And then you have Frankie, the Cuban Rock Iguana, um, Cyclora nubula. So it's really cool being able to work with all three of these species. Um, it'll be really cool to eventually get a female for him. And then, I mean, hopefully, of course, just being successful breeding what we already got, but that hasn't been on our side yet. But yeah, Frankie's awesome. A gorgeous, gorgeous animal. But sometimes we're nice and slow with him. There you go, buddy. And see, again, just stood up. We went from his, his lower position and he just stood up. Now these guys are smart, you know, so if he didn't want me touching him, if he did not want me here with him right now and doing this while he's eating, he's going to let me know. He's not a, a dumb animal that might be so distracted by the food that he just doesn't realize what's going on. All of these rock iguanas are just so incredibly smart and aware. He's allowing me to do this. So that's saying there is a level of trust there. It's just not fully there and you know he said he just has his days where he's in a mood and that might just be his personality for the rest of his life he might have good days he might have bad days 
but we're going to continue to work with them. But that was a really good example of good body behavior. Um, when we go in to see Baby G, who if y'all remember from a few months ago, was the crazy one that kept trying to attack my freaking feet and bite my toes, he is still hormonal and trying to figure things out. Not quite as bad, but he does show some more of the, the head bobbing and other behaviors that you typically don't want to see. Um, so let's go and uh, check in with them. All right, so here we are with baby G. I'm gonna try and see if we can see through here a little. So, right on cue, that head bob. When they do those really big, fast head bobs like that, especially coupled with these rapid movements that he's doing, oh, well, he could also be getting a little bit frisky with his girl up there, but, so those fast head bobs like that are typically the, this is my territory, I'm the big man on campus. So he's definitely trying to intimidate me and say all that. And a lot of times, again, if his mouth is open while he's doing those head bobs, that means get the hell out of there because that means he is ready to defend his territory. But what a little goober, man. And then of course, the bulbs are out yet again. It's just every day you gotta go in and tighten them. What I actually really need to do, I need to take the top off of this, off of this so I can actually just get into the lamp itself and uh, the contact point's probably bent. But since he's a little butthole, I can't go into the cage really to do that. So I'm gonna have to lift that up so I can just grab the lamp and do it. But yeah, so that's uh, some of the negative behavior. Um, unfortunately, I said I'm not gonna be able to show you like the tail whip stuff because that's not what baby Giancarlo here does. He is all about violence. Isn't that right? That's what I thought. Now let me drop some food in here for him and then we'll uh, take a look at some others. All right, so next up in here, we got Freddy and Sky. So Freddy boy is always just a sweetheart. Um, he's just another one, he's just so good that he's so wrapped up in the food, he just doesn't care that I'm here petting him and all that. Um, and Sky, his girl up here, a pretty little thing. Um, yeah, it's another, so that's just another good head bob of, hey, get out of here, I don't want you here. Um, she's thankfully, she's not aggressive or anything, you know, she's not gonna like run at her tail whip and things like that. She's the type that's just gonna try to fl uh, flee, which is okay. Um, but she's pretty girl. I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm just watching her eat because it's just, it's so much fun watching these guys eat their Missouri. Yeah, I mean, if we're lucky, I would love to happily, hopefully have babies out of these guys this year. Um, she has laid her infertiles in the past. They are both absolutely of age. Uh, Freddie here is a 2017 male. She is a 2018. So they're, so she's actually gonna be, holy crap, she's gonna be five this year. Where the heck does time go? I got her as a yearling, so that's pretty crazy. I've had her that long. But love to get some babies out of them this year. So stay tuned for that. I'm gonna, you know, hopefully keep the progress and, or keep the progress, keep checking on the progress and see uh, how we do with them. Let's check in on the delis here real quick. You can see they've actually gotten some good size to them. You got Pablo over here, Mr. Don Pablo. He is definitely uh, asserting his dominance towards me and uh, any other human. I've actually gotten whipped by him and even though he's not that big, that super long tail, excuse all the snult, and that's what all of that white is. Um, yeah, that hurts. And then you got uh, his two girls right over here, um, Luis and Marie. Or Maria, Marie, I don't know. I know one of them is Luis. I think the one in the back is Luis because she's the crazier one. The one in the front's a little bit more chill. But you can definitely see their, their coloration has changed so much. That really fluorescent green on her belly right there, their bodies are changing into this darker color you're now seeing. And on Pablo, you can really see it. Like on his face, the pink that's kind of coming in on his jowls, the little crown coming in at the top of the head. That's some of the stuff that makes these lesser Antillian iguanas uh, so different from greens. Um, and these guys are typically a very chill social species. Again, it just has to be something where they're they're tamed. Um, unfortunately, I have had to grab these guys a few different times, like with cleaning their cage and all that. So they're they're a little bit more territorial and fearful. Um, but you can see they're getting better. They're not just rocketing around the cage like they used to. They'll at least sit here as I am. Uh, like as I'm filming and doing all this stuff. So it's pretty cool. They're uh, they're getting big. They're looking pretty awesome. Golly, holy crap. Ah, oh, see, I almost caught that one on camera. I almost caught my toes. Get out of here, you little turd muffin. 
Nope. See, that right there, that was bad behavior. Yeah, <laughs> holy cow. Oh, you are a nincompoop. Here, you must just be hungry. He's never done that. <laughs> okay, let me just give him a little bit more food. And then let's just go into the tortoises where my feet might be a little bit more safe here. So, like I was gonna say, let's come in here and take a look at the Aldabras, who are just getting absolutely massive. I mean, next to my foot, look how big he is. I wear a size 15. He is a big boy. But, whoo -wee. Got my heart going there. Um, so yeah, so y'all might notice we are short one Aldabra. Um, a couple months ago, just random out of the blue come down here and I noticed we had one was kind of head in the corner right here. And just the way that it was sprawled out, didn't look right and you could just smell it was off. So unfortunately we had one just pass away with no signs of anything. Um, so obviously they all eat the same foods. They're all exposed to the same everything. So I'm not quite sure what happened. It was a bummer though. I, I hate losing any animal, um, especially, you know, guys like these. Um, but yeah, so the other three, you know, they're, they're still doing wonderful. They're getting big. I mean, look at that. Huge. They're just about ready to go outside here shortly, um, which is gonna be great. They have made an absolute mess of their pen as normal because they're massive and like wrecking balls. That big planter right there is supposed to be their water dish. But they knocked it over. So pretty crazy stuff. Um, so this crazy boy right there, he's another one that we're looking to rehome. He's a gorgeous boy. Um, I think he's gonna be tamed down quite easily, in all honesty. I gotta get food for these guys out before they start going crazy over here. They're gonna step in it anyway. Um, yeah, he's, he's very curious. He normally comes right up and you know, I'm gonna able to feed him and all that, no problem. I don't know why he was uh, going so crazy today other than he was hungry because I am a day late feeding them. Got a little busy yesterday. But yeah, so he's one, we just don't have any breeding plans for him. Um, so if you're looking for just a big, impressive male, I mean, he's getting there, he's gonna be there, and he's gonna be super sweet. Or again, just a male to kickstart a breeding project. Um, just hit me a line on the social interwebs and, uh, and let me know, but let me finish feeding these guys real quick. All right, I got them their food. Um, so give another size comparison. This is a 12 inch saucer and you can just see how big they are, especially Fredward here. Fredward is just getting huge. Um, I'm gonna weigh them here uh, before I move them outside. I typically, I always weigh them before I put them outside. I weigh them when I bring them back in. And then usually um, one other time throughout the winter, I weigh them as well. Um, and everyone's growing and doing great. So he's just, he's getting so, so big. And then they just walk right into their mash. Just like freaking lunatics. But the Aldabras here are awesome. But um, yeah, so again, I apologize guys for how long it's been in between our posts. Uh, things have been crazy. I'm hoping to keep up with things a little bit more moving forward. As always, hit us up on Facebook and Instagram and follow along with all the, the fun adventures here. And uh, of course, gbliguanas.com if you want to get some pretty cool shirts and other apparel and stuff like that. 10% um, off using the code Diego10, D-I-E-G-O-1-0. Um, get 10% off shirts, hoodies, I think there's like a mug, a beanie, all sorts of fun stuff on there. But uh, yeah, guys, I will uh, catch y'all next time and try and get out of here without my toes getting nipped. Wish me luck.